right, and do check out those excellent cons and check out Graham Adams' excellent piece on three waters becoming five waters. Uh, I've actually just had a text through from Tina Nixon, and she says, oops, I missed the confiscation of uh, public spaces uh, and parks uh, in my read-through. I'll have a look at it. That is major as well. So the bad news on government water reforms keeps coming, and these reforms, these bad reforms that reduce democracy in this country and are a step towards what some call the apartheid or ethno-state, there'll be law by the end of next week, most likely. Just remarkable. Just remarkable. And you are not reading about this in your media. We'll have a look at what you are being told is important in your media in in just a moment. We'll also uh, dissenting um, or filing a minority report on this report back on Three Waters by the Finance and Expenditure Committee was uh, the ACT Party and their local government spokesperson is Simon Court. Simon joins us now. Uh, Simon, welcome to the programme. Nice to have you with us again. Thank you, Sean, and good morning to you and all of your listeners and viewers of the platform. All right, and you're coming through loud and clear. Fantastic. Simon, I've got to say, we have heard from Simon Watts, your uh, counterpart in National... I don't know, uh, some reluctant outrage on what this report back contains. Can I tell you the response we have had to it on the platform has been deeply, people are deeply concerned that this these changes, which run completely counter to the thousands and thousands of submissions, are going to be rammed through under urgency and be law by Christmas. Does Act share those concerns? Absolutely, Sean. Uh, We've said all along that the uh, infrastructure component of this Three Waters package is secondary, uh, that the Three Waters reform pushed through by Nanaia Mahuta is in fact a treaty settlement disguised as an infrastructure reform. I've asked the Minister herself in written questions and again in the House, what is the rationale for co-governance when the Minister has replied to me Māori have not expressed rights and interests in Three Waters assets over and above those as ratepayers within their communities. There is no justification for the co-governance aspect. This is essentially a treaty settlement disguised as an infrastructure reform. Okay, well, it's not. It's gone past co-governance now. Uh, it would seem to me the Tamana Otewai provisions effectively give sovereignty over water to Māori. Uh, that appears to be the case. Well, the, well hang on, hang on, hang on. My question was specific. It would appear to me that in many senses, the Te Mana Aotewai provisions of the report back give Māori sovereignty over much of our water. That either appears to be the case or it is the case. Please don't be like a national MP and what's around on me. Can you answer that question? Thank you for your... Thank you for your encouragement and support, Sean. Uh, look, um, this Tamana Otawai statements give uh, Iwi and Hapu the right to make a statement to the Three Waters big corporations and that these new corporates will have to give effect to it. They, yeah, give um, effect, not is, take into we, regard, give effect that's to That's right. That's right. And when I've asked the Minister... Uh, what what about farmers? What about business people? What about people who use water to make stuff or simply drinking water for for their uh, organisations? Uh, you know, freezing works, for example. All of these big businesses. When do they get a say? And she said, "Oh, after the new water service entities publishes its response to Tamana O to Y statements." then they'll share them with the rest of the community, with business organisations and farmers. Access, it's completely unacceptable. Sean, I've asked the minister, how on earth are these big new infrastructure asset owners meant to give effect to these statements, when these statements will be able to include things like spiritual matters. We heard submitters from Iwi and Hapu, and you know, they have a right to their own spiritual and religious views, uh, who, who described we their all do. connection. Yeah. That's right. They yeah. describe their connection with uh, Papa Tuanuku, uh, Ranganui, the Sky Father, and how they are, in fact, an embodiment of water. The individuals, they carry the spirit of water. It's not possible for a water company 
or someone delivering irrigation or managing stormwater to take account of your spiritual and religious beliefs. Te Mana Ojawai statements have no place in New Zealand's freshwater management regime. All right. There is also the suggestion that um, public water assets can be confiscated or and private can be nationalised and parks, uh, people current uh, places currently part of the dock estate, etc. Um, our person who's been looking at this, Tina Nixon, said she'd missed that, but that's huge. Did you miss it or not? No, look, it's we had a whole lot of submissions, particularly from regional and local councils, that a lot of the parks and reserves that they manage are also part of the stormwater management system. Uh, we also know that uh, big stormwater assets like uh, what people might think is just a wetland are constructed parts of the stormwater network. And so if these new water corporations are going to take over all of those assets, uh, there's no real clear pathway for how councils, for example, retain control of parks and reserves if the management of them is being handed over to these water corporations. This has clearly come as a surprise to the Minister. Um, it was flagged repeatedly by councils during the submission process. Um, it is a real problem. But look, um, Act says we're going to repeal the three waters uh, uh, or bill five waters. that's been put up. No, start calling it five well, waters. Five waters, five include, waters or eight waters. Thermal and coastal. That's yep. right. Um, that's right. All right. This stuff's going to be passed under urgency in the next fortnight or so, right? Oh, we hear that, um, although the Minister herself has declined to confirm that. Uh, we're getting prepared to have an epic battle in the House, uh, arguing our case that if you want to have a three waters reform, if you want to actually reconcile some of the issues that smaller local communities have, they can't afford to upgrade their water supply systems, there's a simple way to do it. What ACT will be saying is, look, you should let these regions form their own alliances. That's already happening in Hawke's Bay, in Waikato, Auckland itself. Watercare is a subject of an alliance between nine councils. This is possible. Get them to agree on a 30-year infrastructure plan. Central government has to come to the party with some funding. Instead of that, this government's going to spend $2.5 billion bribing councils and loading up debt on these new three water entities so that they can bribe them with um, funds for, you know, uh, swings and slides, town halls, Santa parades, whatever councils want to spend the money on. So look, Act says we don't need to do any of this stuff. There's a simple pathway to Three Waters infrastructure reform that actually lets councils keep control of their assets and communities uh, continue to have a say over what's important to them. All right. Simon, how important is this issue to Act? This is really important to us, Sean. Look, I put up my hand as a civil engineer to stand for ACT because I think there's a much better way to fund, finance and deliver infrastructure so that we can actually grow communities, grow wealth. People can see an opportunity to develop their land and so forth. And then I was elected. The first thing that we face um, is the co-governance model, uh, this infrastructure reform, dress, which is essentially a treaty settlement in disguise. And so... It turns out we're fighting a different battle short. We mm. actually have to confront this division. We have to confront this concept that different groups get allocated different rights based on their ethnicity. And also uh, this fallacy that only Māori, Iwi and Hapu uh, can see the future through an intergenerational lens. We keep hearing this from Anaya Mahuta. It's an affront and it's disrespectful to all of those farming families, those growers, those people who've operated manufacturing and productive businesses uh, for many generations and kept that wealth in their families. And, and, and you know, Act says this is vitally important to the future of New Zealand. We've got to fight back against this. If it does pass, we'll repeal it. OK. Someone else has texted me in and said, take it legal. They believe this is unconstitutional, such an affront to New Zealand that this legislation, you should go to the courts to stop this legislation? Well, Parliament is sovereign, Sean, so Parliament yeah. would have to pass the law before yeah. you can take it to court. However, yeah. to give your caller or your viewer some hope, uh, there, are, there is a legal challenge from the Water Users Group to the Crown Law opinion uh, that said that Māori do have rights and interests in three waters assets. We have asked, the ACT Party's asked, 
please will the minister share that Crown Law opinion because we don't think that it actually justifies uh, this patchover of local government and community assets uh, through the Three Waters reform. And again, Nanaia Mahuta's uh, replied to my question that Māori have not expressed rights and interests in Three Waters assets over and above those as ratepayers. So, look, we can take it to court. Um, Act has, uh, is the first line of defence. We'll be arguing very strongly uh, in, uh, in the House uh, when this bill comes that there's no need for the Tamana Otawai, the co-governance aspects, there's no need for centralisation, the funding and finance model is broken. Um, in fact, you can't achieve balance sheet separation without the government standing behind these three water entities. And and we should just ditch it and start again. All right. Uh, look, I gave the other Simon a hard time about this. Did you guys put out a press statement on this on Friday or over the weekend? Yes, on Friday afternoon, we put out a press statement where we uh, rejected the we, we rejected the basis of the reform and, and we offered um, Acts Three Waters alternative plan, which I put to councils and mayors last year. I put it to the 67 councils and mayors and we had an overwhelming positive response. And in fact, many of our suggestions were picked up by communities for local democracy um, and uh, Mayor Wayne Brown, Phil Major, yeah, uh, and, and the three uh, mayors. Dan from Wayne yeah. have incorporated uh, many of, of, of aspects of our proposals. All right. Has David Seymour made a statement about this yet? Is it high on his priority list? Because we know that Chris Luxon went on the Disney Channel this morning, didn't mention it. Yeah, it, it is a high priority for ACT uh, and for our leader, David Seymour. Uh, David and, and I have uh, ongoing discussions about how we're going to respond to all matters in, in, our portfolio, in my portfolios. So uh, we're lockstep on this. Um, look, thank you, Simon, uh, for joining us this morning, outlining uh, your concerns. No doubt we'll be talking about this in the future. Um, and two quite different Simons, clearly, as local government spokespeople is all I'm saying. I thank you very much indeed for your time. That was Simon Court, ex-local government spokesperson. <coughs> Essentially, I asked him the same questions. They've got the same name. I don't know that they've got the same attitude and they're not members of the same party, getting quite some correspondence on this.